and welcome to episode two of Factoids, the game where one of us, no, sorry, both of us have to pass a factoid, uh, a slightly truth-sounding fact, past the other one in order to, to win. Um, we, we have three rounds. Um, first round, we do a fact. It's not themed. Think about putting things in there later. Uh, and then we keep going, go through the whole thing. We get to the end. We guess which one's the factoid. If you get it right, you win. If it's a draw, we go to headlines. And headlines is judged by our producer, Nigel. Hang on. Nigel. See? I don't have to get it right. Ah. So, without further ado, Nigel, um, you will check the comments and bits. And <laughs> and I'm going to hide you uh, away. Uh, we're not allowed to read the comments. So, if you want to put things past us, that's fine. Uh, but, hey. So, right, Keith. Oh, now I've hidden Nigel. So there goes your help. It's on to round one. And as you won last week, uh, you won't let me forget, <laughs> you have to go first. Okay, so... I call this one, your departure was where? So, now you may know this, that man landed on the moon in 1969. I think you knew that. Um, and on their return, they, they, they landed in Hawaii. But on their return, did you know that they were forced to go through immigration and fill out a customs form? And they had to declare moon rocks, moon dust, and whatever else they brought back from the moon. But basically, the US government forced these astronauts to go through immigration because they had left the US to go to the moon. To to and the moon. On, on their forms, it says departure, the moon. <laughs> and, any, and what do you have to declare? Moon rocks, moon dust. And this is genuine. The, 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 these forms exist. Um, and they were forced to do this. They it was it was they were told you have to go through immigration and customs because you left the United States. That is that is my first one. Nice and simple one. Now is that a fact, or is it a factoid? My opening gambit says it's a factoid because they would go straight into quarantine um because they need to be checked but they were they, they were they were forced to go when i say they were forced they had to fill out forms and get checked now they can they did that from the quarantine bubble on the ship but there was an immigration and customs officer on the ship okay this is general. all right all right okay okay all right i can see nigel i can see little comments spiraling up in the top corner there all right so considering you opened with um your your spacey fact I will now do my Heavenly Bodies, starring Natasha Hentridge from the 1990s. <laughs> Did you know the planets make sounds? They can fart and burp and all kinds of things. Yes, planets make sounds. Um, yeah, uh, planets can make sounds. This was spotted by uh, Voyager and three other probes, which I didn't write down on my notes, which I'm now kicking myself for. Um, Voyager yeah, planets 2. make sounds. No, uh, Voyager, was Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Voyager 3. <laughs> uh, no, there were two other ones that had some weird names on there. Anyway, the, the radio transmissions, uh, sorry, the radio, uh, it, it emanates as a, as a radio wave that can be interpreted as sound. Now, Jupiter, when you listen to Jupiter, sounds like the ocean. Calming waves, going by that. But Saturn, Saturn sounds like, what did I write? <laughs> Saturn sounds like an alien planet from the uh, from an episode opener of a do 1960s Doctor Who. Uh, no, not the thing. It doesn't go. <laughs> yep. So uh, planets make sounds. Jupiter makes a wavy sound, and Uranus sounds like a Doctor Who alien planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a child. Uh, I, I think I think that's a fact because we have radio telescopes that literally listen to sound waves and radio waves. So um, I'm going to say that's a fact at this okay. point in time. You're going to mm. say that's a fact. 
Interesting. <laughs> right. Okay. With that, time for round two. Now, I call this one, the name is Kitty. Hello, Kitty. It's 1960s America, okay? And we've got mini skirts, Woodstock, hippies, the Vietnam War, and the Cold War is hotting up. Uh, see what I did there? Um, so, so America is feeling like it's been sort of like, you know, it's feeling the pressure on all of its borders. And the pressure was on the CIA to come up with new ways to acquire, you know, information, you know, intelligence. Okay. So one bright spark in the CIA decided to, um, how do I put this, uh, employ cats. And what they did was they created small listening devices and they got implanted them in the ears. And this project was called Project Acoustic Kitty. And what they did was they, they tested this by dropping one of these cats off outside the Russian embassy in Washington, D.C., and they were hoping that these cats would pick up on conversations, you know, top secret conversations between Russian spies and all that kind of thing. Now, it cannot be confirmed, but some people say that the first cat got dropped off was was then hit by a taxi but and, and killed. But some others say that it wasn't and the cat lived for a long and, and a, you know, useful life. But anyway, there was a number of these, but they decided by 1967 that this wasn't working because the cats became too easily distracted. You know, the odd piece of string would go past, the cat would no longer be um, gathering intelligence and chasing after the string. But this project cost the US government $20 million before this. Uh, it was cancelled in 1967. But yes, the project was called Project Acoustic Kitty. Now, Gareth. Where cats use the spice in the US. Right. Can I ask you a favor? Can you repeat that in a Russian accent? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Not the whole thing. Work cats. I can't know. I'm gonna sound like I can't do Russian accents. <laughs> right. Um, I think that's that sounds quite true. I've I've seen them use dogs to take out tanks. Um, so cats to spy on people doesn't sound a million miles away, and pigeons as to, uh, as missile guidance systems is the other one. Um, yeah, uh, I think that one's true. Do you know what? I'm going to change my order now because uh, um, I'm going to go for a Cold War one too, uh -huh. and this is called Stan saves the world from nuclear <laughs> annihilation. Back in 1983, one man, one man prevented nuclear Armageddon. And his name was Stan. And Stan the man, Stan the man, <laughs> I fucking oversold this really badly. Stan the man was a, a duty officer for the Oco nuclear early warning systems in the USSR. And Stan was a very diligent employee. Stan liked to make sure that everything was, was, was right. But one day he got a ping from one of the Russian satellites. The new the Americans have decided to nuke America. No, no. <laughs> the USSR. Sorry, the Americans have decided to nuke the USSR. So Stan. <laughs> goes it'll be all right <laughs> <laughs> then you sure you sure his name was stan not nige <laughs> then <laughs> hold on hold on then stan gets another ping they've launched more missiles and stan goes it'll be fine and stan leaves it because stan believes that the early warning system's broken so he's like nah fuck it it'll be fine so Stan does not hit the button to tell the USSR to retaliate. So in 1983, we were saved by a man called Stan. I know you can't tell I've been practicing that one in the car. No. Um, the thing is, right, that kind of rings a bell. 
Now that doesn't mean it's a fact because I know that you've you, you've tricked me before. Um, no, I haven't, according to the game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm going to cautiously say that is actually a fact because I have heard something similar. Okay. So a man called Stan in the USSR saved the world <laughs> from atomic annihilation. Yeah, I'm going with that. That might be a fact. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> right, next round. Headlines. And we need Nigel for this one. Right, do, do, Nigel, do Nigel, share? Nigel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Right, I'm going to share mine. So, I'm going to go first on this one because I actually prepared this week because I'm too worried about doing all the other show stuff. Yeah, I tend to cock this bit up. So, here's my headline. Miracle Cure kills fifth patient. <laughs> ah... <laughs> <laughs> sure was not read the rest because it takes the fun away from it. Um, so, Keith, okay. I'm not sure I can get through this one. Hang on, steady yourself, uh -huh. Keith. Man arrested after cops spot suspiciously small package in his artists. <laughs> How the fuck did they spot it? Where is this? <laughs> it's New Zealand. <laughs> No, it's um, um, Australia. <laughs> right. So, sorry, I, I pressed the wrong button. There. So, Nigel, which one's the funnier one? I quite Hang like on. the miracle cure. Tiebreaker, much, I win. How much is he paying you? How much paying, is he paying you? I'm not paying him anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, who did I go with last, last time? Keith. Yeah, okay, it's even. Yeah, fair enough. There you go. He's, 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 I, I, he's trying not to have a favourite child. I, I honestly couldn't remember who I went with last week, and it seems it's even at the moment. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Third and final round. Sorry, Nigel. Got to get rid of you. Right, Mr. Sycamore. So I, I've got another space one, and I'm going to call this one Celestial Sandwich. So, right, now now you, you have to sort of like bear with me on this one, right? So the distance from the Earth to the moon is 384,400 kilometers, or 238,555 miles, right? That is the distance from the Earth to the moon at its furthest distance, right? Did you know that if you took all the planets, that's eight planets or seven, the, the other I seven know. Planets, oh, you... Okay. Did you know that if you lined them up from one to the other, they fit in between the Earth and the moon? And not just that. If you add, because if we go pre-2000, if you add Pluto, which was then a planet, it would also uh, still leave room to spare. Oh, 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 you evil man. You evil man. You know why? Because I know why? that I know the other one as a fact. But I don't know if they included Pluto. Oh, I and I can go one further. You could even add other celestial um, uh, objects, including Cirrus, and still have room to spare. I think that's fact. I'm hoping that's fact. I'm sure that's fact. I'm sure I read that. That was one I was going to pick this week for Celestial Bodies. I'm glad you bloody didn't. <laughs> but it might be true. This is why we're including Pluto, three. the dwarf planet in this one. All right. I can see. This is funny because you can't see Nigel reacting to this stuff down below. All right. I call this one more dangerous than a shark attack. All right. What's more dangerous than a shark attack? Okay. So, all right. My my wife, when she finds out I bought a new drone. Oh a koala God. attack. Right. Go <laughs> on. 
as soon as he popped in like that, it's gonna be <laughs> dreadful. Right, okay. So I looked up some statistics on things that are more deadly than shark attacks. And the two, the two that stuck out for me was vending machines <laughs> and <laughs> selfies. Okay. Selfies have killed on average, sorry, kill 13 people a year, according to studies. Um, there are causes of car crash, electrocution, being run over by trains, death by grenade. <laughs> I love that one. I've got that in bold. <laughs> falling off a cliff, falling into active volcanoes, etc. Where vending machines have killed 12 people by falling on top of them. That teaches you for being an angry son of a bitch because you can't get your miles well. Right. What do you think? Fact or fiction? The, hang on, let me just rephrase that. Selfies are more de deadly than vending machines. You see, now I think all of yours have been facts, but I don't know. I think that's a fact because it's going to be complete, so unbelievable that vending machines are more deadly than freaking. I can believe selfies because I can see some stupid person walking out in the middle of the road going, and not looking where they're going. Okay. Um, All right. I, yeah, let's run through them three again, but let's say that's a fact. You're going to say that's a fact. Okay, oh, yeah. so starting with you, you're three, and then ask me, and I'll see what's uh, fact or fiction. Okay, so uh, my three facts were, well, they were, you know, say, where was your destination again? The uh, Apollo um, astronauts, that was Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, and, of course, Neil Armstrong, were forced to go through immigration and customs when they returned from their historic landing on the moon. Then we had, they call me Kitty. Hello, Kitty. Project Acoustic Kitty, a project by the CIA in the 1960s. And the final fact was that you can fit all of the planets, including the dwarf planet Pluto and others, including Sirius, with room to spare between the Earth and the Moon. Which one, Gareth, is the factoid? All right. I'm going to go, the first one's a factoid. Because it was probably not Hawaii, it was probably Florida or somewhere like that. Okay, I've got to find it now. Right, now. Uh, Are we doing my reveal now, or do we? Go on, uh, go on, do your reveal. I'll, 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 I'll just endure the pain. I'll endure the pain. It's. Complete fiction. Now, now, this is I interesting. Won. I've won you this did. one. It doesn't but, matter if we but, draw. I've won. I've won one. <laughs> Quick. But, right, that's it. Fact is finished. We're never doing any again. <laughs> Bye. I've got to give you some information around this. Okay. Because right. every website that I looked up said this was a fact. And they did land in Hawaii, by the way, or off the coast of Kauai. Um... They did fill out customs and immigrations forms. They did, right? This this is not this is true. But every website says that they were forced to do this. That's the factoid. They did it as a joke, and it was revealed because Buzz Aldrin tweeted this in two thousand and nine at the fortieth anniversary. You go all the way to the uh, the moon and back again, and you still have to go through lousy immigration. And he released a shot of the of the actual form. The form is genuine. There is a form filed at Customs and Immigration from the, from Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins uh, for, from returning from the moon. That's true, but it was done as a joke. They filled it out of their own accord, and no, no other astronaut has ever been forced to go through Customs, despite what you may read on all of these facts. And I was going to use that as a fact, but I thought, hmm. And I did some more research and found on space.com that it was slightly dodgy the other two are completely true and gareth <laughs> uh, you yeah you were, you were right it was a fact <laughs> the planet's one was a fact the planet one i looked that was going to be my heavenly bodies one this week i'm glad i didn't i do you know i write more facts and factoids than i need just in case something like this happens so okay cool um 
So, do you want to just run down your three then? Right. Okay. So, oh crikey, I don't know where I started. Uh, space was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Planets yeah. make noise. Planets make noise. They fart. They 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 make noise, and satellites record them. That was my 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 gambit. Yeah. Jupiter sounds like waves, and Uranus sounds like um, the Doctor Who theme music for the nine the original nineteen sixties. Uh, that was my opening one. And then my next one was the world was saved from atomic annihilation by a man called Stan. And my third yep. and final one was you are more likely to be killed taking a selfie than by an angry vending machine. We're, it, that's no. called uh, more deadly than shark attacks. Well, you see, now I've got a, a thing to, 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 to say here because... I saw the vending machine one <laughs> that was more deadly than shark attacks. So, but what are you saying? Are you saying that 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 vending machines and selfies are more deadly than 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 than, than right. um, no, no, shark no. I'm attacks. saying that vent that this is the when I was looking up what's more deadly than the shark attack, I got vending machines and selfies, and selfies won out by 13 deaths okay, every year okay. versus I know vending I know I know vending machines are more deadly. Don't know how, but I know I saw it and I thought, man, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Um, right. I'm going to say, I'm, I, I've lost this, so I don't really care. I'm going to say, right, I know that planets make sounds, but I know you. I know you. You're a tricky dicky. Right. So I'm going to say that that whilst there is some fact there, I think you are, that, that the sounds that they make, you, you've you changed around a bit. So I'm going to say the planets one. Okay. <laughs> I know it's Stan. It's. A fact. Well done. Right. Um, and this is a great thing. This is why I, this is why I phoned you up this morning and said, make sure you got sources just in case no one fucking believes this shit. <laughs> right, hang on a second. All right, okay. So let me uh agree to close. All right. Uh Have we lost Gareth? I thought I'd I think just we've lost here. Gareth. Just, I think we've lost oh, Gareth just as convenient. he tried to prove. That's convenient, isn't it? I mean, oh, oh I mean, back. that's showing. That's yes, showing. you're back. My, right, right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> that was Wi-Fi, not bloody internet. I'm gonna kill someone for using some crappy thing on it. Right. So here it is. Oh shit! My sound. I need to share sound. <laughs> Dot screen, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a fact because I found this and I was just like, wow. Oh, no, I know, I, I, I can believe that the stand one is a lie. <laughs> okay. I, I've so, heard of this Stan thing, but I don't think his name's Stan. So this no, is you're going to have to give us some more. Go on then. This is what Jeff sounds like. Sounds a bit wavy. You, you need to share it. Sorry. So he sounds a bit wavy, uh, like you got your ear to conch yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this sounds like an alien planet from 1960s Doctor Who. Yeah. True. So yeah. So so can you give us a bit? Did you just make the stand one up completely? No, no, no. The right. stand one's true too. Hang on. The vending machine is a lie. The vending machine, yeah. Th sorry, yeah. Selfies are, are not as deadly as vending machines. Damn. On average, <laughs> all right, hang on a second. Right, so Stan, his name was Stanilavsky Yurikovs <laughs> Petrov, and I cannot say that name. That's why he turned into Stan because I was like, "There's no fucking way I'm saying." That. I'm sorry, I should have sworn. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to swear. <laughs> but it's true. From Board Panda. Um, this was uh, USA versus uh, the USSR. This guy, um, he knew that the early warning system was nonsense. So he didn't press the button in order for uh, anything to go wrong. And that is something I've heard. Saved the world. It's just the fact that I could not say Stanislavski. 
Stanislavski. So Stan, so Stan, short for Stanislavski, save the world. Stan the man. Um, <clears throat> so I've won one. <laughs> Sorry, Fight Toys is now finished and will never come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I won one. I just needed to win one. I can lose the rest of the season now. Oh, quite the, the rend- yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll believe it when you when you do, because um, you are. Uh, but the vending machine, well. the vending machine one. I saw the vending machine one. That's what annoys me. I saw that. I saw that. That was more deadly than shark attacks. But you, you tricky dicky. Yeah, well, it's the fact that it's on- so close to selfies. I thought I'm not. I'm not giving him. Sp- I'm not giving him any space on this one. The worst thing is we're looking roughly in the same places. There you go. Uh, mm. <laughs> oh, right. Just we talk about selfies. Right. Um my my wife wanted to lay down in Main Street, yeah. Mm. Um, and take a picture with the castle behind her with her laying down. I'm like, no, you get run over by a horse. Um, so yeah, I can I can completely understand where self you, you thought the selfies might be more dangerous than um things. Um now I know I know not... somebody fell into the uh the sulfuric um, waters at Yellowstone Park. Oh my God. Now, I don't know. Uh, it's a few years back. Um, I don't know if he was trying to take a selfie or what, but he fell in and nobody could get him out because he immediately started to melt. <laughs> Within 30 minutes, there was zero trace of him. All the bones and everything were gone. Oh, that's a lovely story, Nigel. And that could be fact. Uh, uh, no, you, you're not playing. You have to tell the truth. I know. See, the no, other one is, the that one is that something you, I've read, and it is true. the one that you probably had was the statistic of 37 people were attributed to vending machine deaths between the years of 1978 and 1995. In order to crunch figures, that's 2.818 deaths annually in the US. That's probably one that you picked up on. You see, I thought you'd because I know that we look at the same sources, and a lot of these were saying that that that, that the Apollo astronauts were, had to go through customs and things, and they're coming up as facts. In fact, I saw it on about four websites. I thought, mm-hmm. and then I actually went to like a reputable source, space.com was one of them, and NASA themselves, and they said, No, no, no. This is the many sites have picked up on this being a fact, and it's 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 actually a factoid. In fact, space.com said factoid. <laughs> So, well, yes. yes. so, you can join us um, next week for heavenly yeah. bodies. <laughs> um, yeah, well, so it was a one. true factoid. <laughs> well done for spotting it. Congratulations, yes. Gareth. Congratulations, Thank you very much. Chief. Does that make it one one? Or who won? Yeah, it makes us one one. Yeah, because well, the pilot. Well, technically, because he doesn't want to include the pilot. Pilot. The pilot was when we were figuring stuff out. I didn't even get the scoring right in the pilot, okay? So the pilot doesn't count. Oh, okay? you didn't get the scoring right, even though I won convincingly. <laughs> win convincing, just won. <laughs> I won the headlines, I won the whole lot. <laughs> anyway. Man kills duck to find out why they're dying. <laughs> And on that note, thank you very much for watching. This has been Factoids. We'll be with you in two weeks' time. Have a good day and see you soon. Guys, wave at the camera like it's a 1990s TV show. And I'll press the button.